Hi there, my name is Albert Gannat and I recently received my PhD from the MIT Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics. I'm now a postdoc in the Julie Lab at MIT where I work under Alan Edelman and Lincoln Lab as part of the US Air Force MIT Artificial Intelligence Accelerator. Today's video is an introduction to the magnav.jl Julia package, which contains a suite of tools related to airborne magnetic anomaly navigation. The main topics will be an overview of the package contents, followed by a short tutorial. Before I dive in, I would like to acknowledge the rest of the MagNav team. These uh, team members have contributed in various ways to this effort, so thanks everybody. The basic idea for Airborne Magnetic Anomaly Navigation, or MagNav, is to use magnetic measurements taken by the aircraft in order to assist with navigation. The simplified concept of operations is to start with an initial position using GPS for example, at which point it's assumed that the position information is no longer available due to GPS jamming for example. The aircraft still has an inertial navigation system that can estimate position, but the position error will drift over time. However, magnetic measurements can be taken and essentially compared to a known magnetic anomaly map in order to correct for the drift and increase the position accuracy. Uh, anomaly in magnetic anomaly map basically refers to the local magnetic variation in the Earth's crust. There's four essential com components required for MagNav, which are the primary capabilities of the MagNav.jl package. Magnetic measurements and other flight data can be read in from an H5 file. The magnetic measurements may then be compensated, which is essentially removing aircraft interference noise. This cleaned data can be fed into the navigation algorithm, which compares the measurements to a magnetic anomaly map which is also read in from an H5 or MAT file. The package contains many tools to carry out this process. As mentioned on the last slide, flight data can be imported, but it can also be simulated. The, the package contains custom open source data that can be automatically downloaded via artifacts. There are many functions available for magnetic anomaly map processing, especially filling in the map with a KNN and upward and downward continuation. There's also error magnetic compensation models, which is a key feature of this package and which it was originally developed for um, to do research at MIT. And so for that reason, there's many different models available, some of which are very experimental. So there's the classical tolls Lawson model, then there's online versions of aromatic, aeromagnetic compensation, and then there's many, many neural network-based models. Finally, multiple navigation algorithms are included, though the extended Kalman filter, the EKF, has only been tested extensively. As mentioned on the last slide, the package contains a unique open source flight data set that was collected using a geosurvey aircraft by Sanders Geophysics in Ottawa, Canada. Flights were performed at different altitudes with a variety of different maneuvers. Five scalar magnetometers are included, which have different levels of noise based on their placement in the aircraft. Four vector magnetometers are also included, along with inertial navigation system data, current and voltage measurements, and other auxiliary data. The baseline approach for MagNav uses the Tolls Lawson aeromagnetic compensation model, along with an extending Kalman filter for the navigation algorithm. And now we're going to take a look briefly at how this is actually run in an example for the package. Uh, this demonstration is available in the public repository on GitHub, shown up top here. And the first thing to note is that uh, for convenience, uh, information about the open source data is stored in the various data frames listed here. So for example, the map data frame, DF map, uh, it's the different maps that are available within the package. And in this case, it's uh, basically a pointer to where the files are saved 
uh, when the artifacts are downloaded. So uh, the first thing that happens in this example here is that uh, this common setup file is run, which is basically loading different packages. And I'm not going to go into detail with this file for brevity. And then the next thing is selecting a flight that we want to look at. And again, we're going to look at this, this flight data frame if we, win a, we want to find out what's available. And then we run this get XYZ function to actually load that data. And within the package, generally XYZ is used as the flight data name. Then we're going to do the same type of thing with the map file. In this case, we want to choose Eastern 395. And based on that combination of flight data and map, uh, these are the options that we can use for, for flight lines. So in this case, 1006.08 and 0 0.09. And a flight line is basically a smaller segment of the flight data that we want to look at more closely. So here we're choosing the first of those, so 1006. 0.08, and then we get the indices for that data within, within the larger flight data set. And we also want to choose some other indices uh, for Tolls Lawson Aeromagnetic Compensation. I'm not going to go into detail about um, why these ones were selected, but uh, the important thing is that we're, we're choosing some indices for compensation. And then we can look at what the raw data looks like uh, without any compensation just to get a sense of the noise in the data. So MEG1 is the cleanest data and it's a nice very smooth line and this is more or less the truth data in this data set whereas MEG4 is pretty noisy and MEG5 has some noise but it's not as bad. And then we'll jump to the the tolls loss and model and there's just not enough time to go into detail in this talk. I recommend finding uh, my thesis video if you want more details on this. And uh, basically we choose uh, some, some data, vector magnetometer and whatnot, and then we create some tolls loss and coefficients to do the compensation. And then we, we carry out the compensation in these couple boxes here. And the data is extracted uh, to do navigation. So there's a trajectory struct, that's basically the GPS. There's an INS struct, that's the, the INS data. And there's a, a few other things that are extracted here. And then we actually set up a navigation filter model down here, and then we run it here. Uh, this is running the, the, the EKF in this case, navigation filter. And doing so in, in this case with a pretty noisy magnetometer, we end up with 102 meters of DRMS error, which isn't too bad. And you can see roughly what's going on here. The, the colors aren't that great, but um, the, the, the filter is doing pretty well compared to the GPS. Um, and so th that'll uh, wrap up this example. Thank you for uh, listening. Have a good one.